Hello and welcome to the first video of uh, my um, brew tube channel. Um, my name is Jacko. Uh, I've been called Jacko since I was about a teenager, maybe even before that. Everybody calls me that. It's not my real name, but hey ho. Um, I have been brewing for oh, about four, maybe five years now, and I have recently, in the last two years, <laughs> recently, I have recently, in the last two years, um, moved to an all grain system. Um, I have a couple of systems that I use. I have still got brew in the bag capabilities, um, and I generally use a three vessel. Um, so I've got a Pico bin, um, Pico boiler, which I use as an HLT. I have a Coolbox mash tun, um, and I have a Buffalo boiler, which I use as a boiler. Um, I have a number of, um, well, I have two freezers in the in my shed, which are controlled by Inkbird um, thermostats, which I can use. I also have heaters in them, so I can use them either as fermentation chambers or um, if I have a lot of beer and nothing being fermented, they can be used as fridges, spare fridges as well. Um, the plan was originally to make a kegerator out of one of them, but that's kind of fallen to the wayside and then I ended up buying a full bar anyway. Um, so I have a full bar, uh, <laughs> although it is massive compared to this house. So I bought it whenever I had a different house uh, and it was set up in the garage and it was pretty cool. but. Um, situation has changed and now I'm in this house I don't have a garage and it's currently in the kitchen dining room area and it is taking up a wild lot of space and um, so I took a hiatus from brewing there um, in June I brewed um, maybe about five brews in the month of May sort of end of May start of June which was unheard of for me I don't really brew that frequently but I had a number of events and stuff coming up and people were asking me for different things um, and then I just had one disaster. Um, I bought a 20 kilo gas canister for, for kegging. And at one of the parties, the aftermath of the party, not even at the party, um, at the aftermath of the party when the people were cleaning up, uh, somebody knocked it over and split the regulator. And of course the CO2 went. So that set me back. Um, and then I had, at that time, I had a lager on fermentation, I think, and it got infected, and it was just one thing after another. Um, bear in mind, also, I just moved into this house, and there's a lot of work needing done in the house as well, so the work was getting put back and put back because the brewery was taking over and over, uh, and eventually I just thought, you know what, no. Um, focus on getting everything ready so that when I do come back to brewing, I know where everything is, I know how everything works, and I can get it done easy enough. And that was the plan. So that was fine. Spent the last six months of last year working on the house, getting things set up, buying shelving for the sheds. Um, just generally housekeeping, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, but in December then, I was looking about and thinking, right, I'm ready, let's do this again. And I've come up with a New Year's resolution that I will not be buying beer as a carry out or a carry out at all in 2020 and I'm going to brew enough beer throughout the year that I don't need to uh, so that means basically I'm going to be brewing a month in advance of what I'm, at least a month in advance of what I want to, to actually drink and um, so that started on New Year's Day when I decided to brew Gulch which is something I've brewed many, many times before um, with nothing short of good results. I've never had a batch of coats that I've had to throw away or anybody else that's drank it's always thought that's pretty good. Um, and I thought, you know, it'd be a nice easy one to get back in the swing of things, start my brain working in that way again. And then I fucked up. You done fucked up. Um, I was, when I put from the mash tun into the boiler, I didn't manage, well, it looked light when I did that, and then when I put it from the boiler into the fermentation bucket, I realised I was approximately somewhere in the region of 
13 to 15 litres light of what I should be. And the figures were hit pretty close to what they were meant to be, the gravity figures. And I didn't understand what I'd done wrong. <laughs> so I went on uh, the Facebook YouTube group and someone sort of made a joke suggestion, did you forget the sparge? And it looks like that is what I've done. Uh, Ricky error. So I was really annoyed with myself, if I'm honest, but um, you can salvage some stuff from and uh, most disasters you can salvage something from. Um, so what I did was I got what I did get out of the fermenter, um, or out of the, the kettle into the fermenter, and put it in a demijohn. So I put five liters or so there and I put the K97 in and it took off like an absolute rocket ship and we here we are on Saturday which is the 4th I think 5th maybe 4th and it's still bubbling away you might be able to hear it actually because you're quite close to the the demijohn there Um, it took off like the only thing I've ever seen and the only yeast I've ever seen take off and be so vigorous was when I was using Kavai Gloss for um, Kolsch um, back in the summer <laughs> even though it was warm in the summer I was putting in the hot press so it was like 28, 29 degrees and it was just blah, 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 blah. Um, but there you are now <coughs> excuse me so K97 and I'm still going strong I mean, normally if things take off really quickly then they, they you know they go up and then they come straight down and then they sort of level out but this has sort of got, come down a wee bit but you know, it's still going quite vigorously. Um, so lesson learned from that. Um, I have another uh, coach ready to go, uh, grain sack mm -hmm. of coach ready to go. So that'll maybe be going in to the kettle maybe next week, maybe the week after, just see how I go. Um, so I will have two lots of coach going. And I am also going to be brewing very shortly my first ever um sour beer um, my best one of my best mates really likes sour beer um, the sour -er, the better uh, as far as he's concerned and ever since I've taken this hobby up the question's always been when are you going to do a sour when are you going to do a sour when are you going to do a sour or where I put it into the group chat that's going to make a beer here what do you what do you think do you want an IPA do you want a lager do you, so sorry, sorry, sorry. So finally, give in. Um, I've done a wee bit of reading on it, and I'm going to do. I'm going to do like a kettle sour, basically. Uh, so I'm going to introduce some bacteria into the liquor, and uh, just prior to the boil, um, or sort of in an intermittent stage of the boil, and um, so boil off the, the bugs very quickly. Bacteria. Leave it for a day or so continue the boil and, and finish the brew <coughs> excuse me so that is the plan and um, I was also meant to be doing dry January so if I made beer in January then it was going to be drinkable cold particularly because it's a short turnaround in between brewing and drinking and um, it was going to be available for me to drink in February and that would have got my year off to the, a great start however dry January is probably going to go out the window this evening uh, my friends over from England, which I forgot about. Excuse me. Um, but sure, we'll see how it goes. I can maybe do start dry January from Sunday here, or, um, and then keep it going for an extra week in February is maybe what will happen. Um, so I'm on a bit of a healthy kick as well. New year, new me, you know. Um, yeah, so I think that's all. Uh, I need to do for an introduction um, my video my introduction uh, to brewing video will be up soon um, I will do that with the cold shot I'll get it right this time um, I also have uh, a single vessel single vessel single vessel system on its way via the Royal Mail or DPF or Hermes or Zupla I don't know it's being delivered by someone anyway um so that will be interesting and um, so i'm going to do a culture on it because allegedly i know how to make culture and i've never made a bad culture um, 
So that's what is going to be the first brew on that. And I'm going to go back to the three system, the three tier system for the SAR because I don't want to get any bacteria into the brand new system. Um, and I will just simply boil it off, we'll kill it, but I am paranoid. Um, because when I started reading about SARS a few years back, whenever uh, the big lad was first starting to get into them, um, I was reading, oh, you must, you can only use, once you've used this for a SAR, you can never use it for anything else, so make sure you buy some new equipment, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think that was more for Lambeck SARS, um, naturally occurring SARS. Um, but there you are now, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, a lot of my recipes, in fact, the vast majority of my recipes come straight from the Bible. I'm just working my way through um, a couple of ideas. Um, I also want to do, for this summer, I want to do a really traditional, really fiery um, ginger beer. Um, if any of you remember Jeremiah Weed, it was one of my favourite drinks a while back. Very, very sugary, very, very sweet. Not really a beer as such. Um, but I'm quite confident that with a light sort of lager or light ale type, I uh, might even use Kulsch and then um, some ginger into that will be lovely with some ice on the hot day of the summer. And I say day. Um, so yeah, um, so that's that's that. That's all I can really talk about at the moment. I don't have anything else to show you. Um, as I go through this year, I'll be documenting pretty much everything I do in Bruin. Um, taste and that sort of thing as well. I also plan to go to my local homebrew club later this this month. Um, I don't really have a lot. Mm. So a few bottles of a, of a paleo I did um, last year. So I'll maybe bring them, see what it is, but I don't think it's great. And then I will kick on. Um, I also think that 2020 is gonna be the year that I finally grow up and I'm able to drink a stout or a porter. Uh, and I want to make, I want to make stout. I want to make a good stout because everybody in my office and work is all Guinness, 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 freaking Guinness. And I want to make them something that will make them go. Oh, actually, there's more to them. There's more. There's more to this than just Guinness, you know, buddy. Hey, um, they're, they're all cultures. That's how they speak. Um, and for anybody that's not from Northern Ireland and doesn't know what a culture is, um, I think I remember you. You probably get it from that, um, but yeah. So that's just a short introduction. What are we? Thirteen minutes there. Um, yeah. So, function back.